Hey everyone, I'm here to serve you literally the hottest tea you've heard all week. Today we're gonna cover a highly requested video titled Trisha Paytas Before the Fame, The Dark Side of Trisha Paytas. This is the first episode of the series by a YouTuber named Mysterious, so shout out to her for doing such thorough research and watching enough Trisha videos to last a lifetime. But before we get into the video, I want you guys to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. We post new videos every single day. All right, let's get into it. So Mysterious basically uses Trisha's book and early YouTube videos to debunk her own lies. It's so crazy, but before we get started, I should let you know that we're not here to invalidate anyone's traumas. This is just speculation because Trisha has been known to lie or embellish things throughout her career. Everything is based on what she has chosen to share with the internet and there are a lot of inconsistencies in what she's shared. If the stuff that Mysterious talks about in her video actually is true, then at this point her lies are not only hurting herself, but they're starting to ruin other people's lives. Also, a quick trigger warning for SA, even though we don't really go into detail, but if you think that's too much for you even, feel free to watch my other videos. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, hit the notification bell for the hottest tea out there. Okay, let's dive in. So a lot of childhood and familial trauma that Trisha had back then really stems from her mom mom and dad separating when she was a little kid. Her dad left for California while her mom and siblings stayed in Illinois where she is originally from. This is where she thinks her abandonment issues stem from. She got into acting at the age of five. Apparently her mother called her acting lying. I remember developing my love for entertainment and acting or as my mom referred to it as lying. I would make up crazy stories to tell my mom about finding Native American ghosts in her backyard, about me discovering I was a witch and I had magical spells. Also her mom would wash her mouth with soap every time she lied. This made Trisha not want to confide in her mom when bad things actually happened to her throughout her life. She wouldn't say anything because her mom just assumed she was lying about everything. According to herself, Trisha's shopping addiction comes from the fact that even though neither of her parents were rich, they still spoiled her by buying everything that she asked for just to buy her affection. This one time, her mom told her that her dad bought her stuff because he felt guilty for leaving her and from then on, Trisha learned that making people feel guilty could actually benefit her. In Trisha's book, she described what it meant to have her father buy anything she wanted. Quote, it made me happy instantly and fixed any doubts or problems I had with my father. Trisha says she was essayed in middle school. She said it on Frenemies and like in a billion other videos on TikTok. I had an incident happen in um, middle school where a teacher like groped my boobs all the time when we would do like heads down, seven up. And so when I finally went to the principal about it, he told the principal, well, she's been wearing water bras. So she like, she's been asking for it. Like it's been teasing me. And the principal was like, have you been wearing water bras? Like, yeah. Say what? <laughs> And the principal was like receptive to that yeah, argument? Yeah, he's like, have you been wearing water bras? I'm like, yeah. He goes, okay, well, let's not wear water bras to school. And like, that was my fault because I wore water bra. And then the second time that happened, uh, it was a teacher and another teacher, different teacher. And he's like, well, she told me she liked the movie Taxi Driver. So like, or Cape Fear, I'm sorry, Cape Fear. He's like, so I just put my thumb in her mouth to suck it. I think that's why I didn't have friends because I think they like knew like they saw my teacher like grabbing me and I was like okay. But in her earlier videos and her book The History of My Insanity, she talks about how she was bullied severely and doesn't mention anything about her SA. Trish said, quote, I remember walking out in my one piecer and everyone snorting making piggy noises. I was so confused. My weight wasn't an issue in my mind at the time. I was about five feet tall and I distinctly remember weighing 100 pounds. I didn't think that was big. For example, she said she had to hide her body at school, especially at gym class because she was being bullied by the other girls, not because she was being sexualized by her teachers. She specifically says in a Frenemies episode that she wasn't being bullied, she was being essayed. I wasn't getting bullied, I was getting by my teacher's mic, so I was a little oh, bit yeah. than <laughs> <laughs> You were getting bullied? <laughs> I was like, um, so funny. I'm pretty sure I was getting <laughs> and R word by my uh, teachers and the principal didn't believe me and I had to do whatever. I love what a dumb is. Happened. He's like, you were bullied, you piece of sh You had it coming. Because they're the people that were bullied. People, they're the people that were bullied. Like, Trisha is, was bullied. <laughs> What is she basing that off of? Because <laughs> I'm fat? I don't know. <laughs> what the f I definitely wasn't. I definitely I love, I love how when it comes to me, he's like, you know he was bullied, but he says it like a fact. Like, Trisha, she was bullied. <laughs> Ethan, come on. You, you know he was probably bullied. I literally never said that ever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also just like, well, the only myself in 2005. That's why I've been in 2005. It's the most trauma of my life because teachers won't leave me alone and they come to my uh, house and just hard with me. I was never attractive in school. I was never in a clique. And I got really bad in my freshman year. Middle school was really tough for me. My mom and I were in the principal's office like, all the time having to deal with girls, you know, harassing me and making fun of me, especially because we had swimming as part of PE. And I know I would get made fun of a ton in a PE class where, you know, the way my body shape wasn't a swimsuit to having to care early in the locker room and girls would be really nasty. And I couldn't even imagine dealing with that now with camera phones and stuff. I, I, I was bullied 
all through, starting at grade school, through middle school, through high school. I went to four different high schools um, because of bullying, because kids were so mean and cruel and vicious to me. Like, it got really bad. The only girl not allowed to wear a two-piece when we do our two-week swim class courses because of my boobs. I was told to put on shorts over my swimsuit because you could see people here through my uh, swimsuit at, like, 11. I used to wear, like, three sports bras, so when I was running, the, the boys in my class wouldn't you know, say that I was a distraction. And I would get in trouble for it. And I would get in trouble for it. And it really, really, really sucked. And I changed, I changed four high schools. I changed four high schools. Because I wasn't bullied. I wasn't like a nerd or people weren't mean to me, but it was, it was that, it was constant. Basically, because of this incessant bullying, Trisha started lying about her life to all her schoolmates. Throughout her life, she's had to change schools a lot. So it was easy to lie to the kids because they didn't really know anything about her. She admits she made up a twin called Trixie that she said she lived in LA with her dad and was skinny and rich and all that good stuff. This is honestly pretty sad to hear, but it kind of makes total sense. Like, she was bullied so much for just being herself that she started to lie about who she was. I honestly don't think that she has stopped lying about herself ever since because considering the lies that Mysterious covers in her video and the stuff that we generally know about her, Trisha has lied about having several mental illnesses without being fully diagnosed. She's lied about her identity as a trans man or whatever she wants to call it, and she's also lied about being extras on shows and she's lied about meeting certain celebrities. The list can honestly go on forever, but I'll just, I'll stop here. She went to high school in both California and Illinois. She was bullied a lot there as well, so she transferred to a small town in Illinois where her mom lived. There, she'd make comments like, I would say random things like horses don't exist because I've never seen them. Something so outlandish and they would believe me. It'd get a rise out of people. It was fabulous and it was attention. This definitely explains her Do Dogs Have Brains video. Remember that? can't talk. So do they have brains? Like, yes, they walk, but it's because we're telling them to walk. Okay, so in her book and in her early videos, she mentions Mr. Dunn, who is a teacher she had who she perceived as a role model, but she also had a crush on him. But my personal favorite teacher was my Mr. Dunn, which it was my junior biology teacher. Mm, he was so yummy. So with this, I got made fun of a lot for my fondness for teachers, but it wasn't sexual. Like, I never made, like, a sexual. Obviously, I was not comfortable with my sexual. When I was, what was I, 16 at this point? So it was more like calling me a suck up. And there was these but vicious, vicious rumors at the school. Like, so I probably would have quit if it wasn't for my hunky biology teacher, Mr. Dunn. He had beautiful eyes. Let's just take a little more time to draw him. He was, uh, he's very handsome and he had glasses, which was very smart looking of him. Uh, and he used to like lend me movies and stuff. And, and we used to play like uh, movie trivia and stuff in his class. And like, I'd always go to like his classroom during like homeroom and like, you know, flirt with him because I liked him a lot. He was really smart and just like really encouraged me to like that I was like better than this little farm town. So he's the reason I stayed just because I was still like in love with him. She doesn't mention any inappropriate things happening between the two. She even admits that it was a fantasy of hers to get with him, but it was something that never really happened. Trish said, quote, Mr. Dunn never gave me the D, but the fantasy and sexual tension were enough for me. He is the only one that I miss from childhood. He is the only one I ever care to see again. It was weird. I was a little Alita. Well, in the sense that like it was one side of Lolita. <laughs> Um, nothing illegal happened to my teachers ever, um, but like, little naughty teachers, I definitely was like into my teachers so much, it was weird. I don't know, I probably would have been even more traumatized from life if I ever did anything with the teacher. After her senior year of high school, her mom had a boyfriend that she calls Tiger in the book. Apparently, he was really mean to her and would walk around naked all the time and steal from her. This really put a strain on her relationship with her mom to the point that her mom even turned Trisha's sister against her. Even earlier in her videos, Trisha addresses how the situation was not safe for a 17-year-old girl because she couldn't really speak up since her mom thought she was always lying, so she'd get in trouble for saying anything. Not a safe environment for a 17 year old to be in. When I talked about this stuff, like I think people thought I was made up, so I learned to just zip my lip, and I did not tell my mom a lot of stuff, and my mom still doesn't know about a lot of stuff to this day. She says she barely talked to her mom during her senior year. Mysterious actually makes a great point when she says Trisha actually has said 2005 was the worst year of her life, but she blamed it on the teacher SA stuff, but this is what was actually happening to her. She was basically living in a really bad condition and may have had inappropriate contact with Tiger. Back then, she even even posted a video of her revisiting her hometown and she wanted to visit her teachers but they weren't there I guess. I tried to see you guys but it just didn't work out. Story of my life. So I moved away. So <laughs> why do I why do I care so bad to try and get a little piece of nostalgia when no one likes me here anyways? No one likes me here now. Everyone's like bye. So this means that she actually wanted to see her teachers again. If she had such traumatic memories with her teachers, then maybe she wouldn't have put herself in that situation by choice. More recently, she admitted that in 2005, she caused a car crash because she was trying to unalive herself. Like, no one died or anything in it, but like, I just wanted to end myself basically. But like, I didn't know that at the time. Like, it was, it was a whole thing. I'm just speculating that this was probably because of her home life at the time. After graduating, she basically up and left to go famous in LA. There she had 
had a little falling out with her dad and eventually dropped out of college and became a stripper and escort. That's basically when she started appearing on literally every TV show to ever exist. So we all know about her going on My Strange Addiction for being addicted to tanning and we all know she lied about that since she admitted to it on Frenemies and Impulsive. You were you were on a, a show, right? A show like My Strange Addiction for like for tanning? Oh yeah, but that was bullshit. Like I wasn't really addicted to tanning. I okay, okay. So everything I'm about to say is completely irrelevant. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I've been addicted, but definitely not to tanning. I just did it to get on the show because it was like new, and they're like, "We're looking for people with addictions," and I was like, "All right." You faked the tanning addiction? For sure. <laughs> yeah. For, cl for clout? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, at least you didn't fake a marriage, am I right? <laughs> but when she got into some beef with James Charles, she made this TikTok really bad addiction to tanning and i know that sounds silly to a lot of people but i was actually in the first season of my strange addiction for tanning and it was a real psychological problem as most addictions are i've had several identity crises in my life and tanning was this way to not be myself anymore i liked my aesthetic i liked the way i look but it really did get go too far where the to the point where my organs were being damaged and i had to have skin cancer in me removed and i've never talked about this before so this wasn't blackface this is a really emotionally damaged person covering up her lack of identity through tanning. This is crazy because I can't even tell what really is the truth at this point. Trisha has really mastered the art of lying and manipulation. Like whenever it benefits her, she will put lies on top of her past lies to the point that you can't even trust anything that comes out of her mouth. I'm not at all siding with her mom, but I can see how after a while, everything starts to seem like a lie and it becomes so difficult to trust Trisha's words. So after she started to gain some money from YouTube, she reconnected with her family and now they seem really close together as you can see in her recent videos and her tiktoks she her mom and her sister are like the closest that they've ever been i'm unsure about her brother because she said in a friend of me's episode that he doesn't want her to talk about him but that might just be for privacy reasons because apparently he has like a serious job and may not want to be associated with her on the internet it may also be that her brother is simply embarrassed by her at this point and that's kind of heartbreaking i think she also visits her dad every once in a while, but that's not for certain either. Mysterious really puts it best when she says, I absolutely believe that Trish went through some trauma as a minor, but I don't believe what she claims today is a true version of her life. I believe it's an embellished story that she based on experiences that she actually went through. And I do feel for her in that aspect that she went through something really traumatizing and her mom could have cared less but i don't agree with the damage that's been caused to the people in the schools that she has called out to her millions of followers this character was created as a shield to stop bullying and get attention from kids the trisha that you see online today is still this character but the character that you see online today is a lot more dangerous the lies aren't light-hearted harmless white lies they are damaging shocking lies that could potentially ruin other people's lives here's the tea though mysterious got claimed by trisha for the video that she made meaning that all the ad revenue is going to trisha instead of the creator herself this is only done when a video isn't within fair use, but obviously Mysterious's video adhered to fair use rules, so like what the fuck? Trisha only claimed certain videos included in her hour-long documentary, which suggests that she's probably watched the whole thing. We all know Trisha reads comments and watches videos about herself, so I wouldn't put it past her to watch like a whole documentary about herself. If you want more information about that, you should really check out Mysterious's update video on that, where she also announces that the second episode of her documentary is coming up soon. Here is another thing. This wasn't included in Mysterious' video, but I got a message on our Twitter. This is a cheap plug, but follow us on Twitter at HotTYT if you want extra tea or want to share some piping hot tea with us. Your suggestions really do help. So this Twitter user sends me a Reddit link that I've lost, so shout out to whoever you are. The link was from the H3 Reddit page, where a Reddit user's family member shows the yearbook photos of Trisha during high school just to prove that she wasn't on the wrestling team. She was on the cheerleading team and golf club or something. Now, remember that whole fight that she had with Ethan when he said he didn't want to fight her? I'll wrestle because I'm a good wrestler and women can wrestle men. Yeah, you got, crazy, you got crazy center of gravity. I wrestled guys and if we were in the same weight class, we can wrestle them all day long. So we are in the same weight. I'm not wrestling you. You're a baby. You have a weird thing of not touching people. You're like very like have a sexual issue going she on. She had a whole breakdown about how no one at school <laughs> wanted to wrestle her because she was a girl and had big boobs and all that. <laughs> yeah, well, that was a lie too. I'm bringing up this 
point just to prove that her lying has not only subsided but has become even more intense than ever. Most of her outrageous lies actually stem from her more recent stuff like her videos, her beefs, and her TikToks. She uses these lies to get people on her side so people would feel bad for her so they won't try to argue back or even search for proof because they are such traumatic experiences. No one really wants to see proof. And yeah, that's basically all I have for you guys today. If you want a more in-depth analysis, make sure to go watch Mysterious's original video, which I will link down below. I'm definitely looking forward to the second part of her docuseries, so go give her some love. Thank you everyone for suggesting this video to me because it was really juicy. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you'll know anytime there's some new steaming tea. Comment letting me know how you feel about Trisha after this video because I can't possibly dislike her more. Like, lying about SA is some serious stuff you should never do because it harms other victims and makes them seem less credible. Thank you everyone for watching. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at HotTYT and here is a little something to uplift your spirits. Tell me something, boy. Don't you tell you try to feel that, boy. Yeah, I keep burning so hard, boy. <laughs>